That's how I felt after a spring-loaded event yesterday. Okay, this is Ahmed Bariki, but you can definitely call me Slorks. This is just easier. And uh, this is my reaction video for what happened uh, yesterday. Now, I didn't want to do it immediately after the event for two reasons. I had a live broadcast on my Arabic channel. You can head up there if you're an Arabic speaker and you can watch it. And for the second reason is I didn't want to fall into the placebo effect, right? I didn't want to feel like, oh, this is so amazing and I give it more than what it deserved. So I slept on it. I thought about it. I compiled my thoughts and I'm ready to discuss what happened yesterday and it's phenomenal. As promised, I'm going to be dropping videos in English, so please consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of content and uh, click on that red button and uh, enable the notification bell for so you don't miss the next videos. And please let me know in the comment section and give me your feedback, whether you like it or you don't. And let's start the video. So the way I'm going to do it is picture in picture. You can see me here. All right. And uh, we're going to go through what happened with the event. So there's the introduction. They talked about Apple Pay, which doesn't really make a difference in our region since it's not available in our region. So I'm going to skip right through that. And the first announcement was a mini announcement um, related to the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini. They're going to get a new spring color, which is going to be purple. Um, so it's the same exact phone, same internals, nothing new except for the color, which is kind of cool. They're giving you more options, especially if you're hoping to get one of the new products like the iMac that we're going to be discussing in purple. You can match it with the iPhone too. So it's just a new color for the iPhone. But the new product that they talked about next was AirTag. And AirTag was something that's been rumored and leaked tremendously over the last couple of months. And finally, they announced it. It's exactly what's been leaked. It's a small puck that you can stick on your objects or you can hang it on, on your Lanard or on your keychain that they provide as well for you. And it works with Find My Service from Apple, which works already great with existing products that you have. What it does, it utilizes the U1 chip that's already in your iPhone 11 and iPhone 12. And it connects with your other uh, Apple products, be as it may, an iPad, a Mac, or even your Apple Watch or your AirPods and it sends out those signals and you can find them wherever they are because they do depend somehow on a GPS signaling that works with a U1 chip, which is kind of cool because that means it's not taking up your battery. That's how it looks as hardware and it's battery replaceable, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can just have it anywhere. You can literally have it anywhere. And uh, if you're the type of person that loses his keys or misplaces his bag or gym bag or whatever, you can have this thing stuck on it. And uh, there you go. Those are the keychains and the lanyards. And, and they're going to show you in a second how you can. Yeah, there you go. You can put it on a backpack or your luggage or your kid's favorite toy um, if they keep losing it, for example. And you can utilize the Find My um, technology, which they're going to explain now. And there's a software for it, obviously, the Find My software, which helps you navigate so you can find the product that or the um, item that you're missing. And of course, they take into consideration privacy and all that stuff. But AirTag will start at $29 uh, with a uh, custom engraving for free, or you can get a four pack for $99, which I think is priced pretty well. And they're going to be IP67 water and dust resistant, obviously, since you're going to be using it on a lot of your items. Now, the next uh, thing on the list was the Apple TV. And I was really excited about this because I'm a huge Apple TV fan. I use one myself. I've been using an Apple TV for the last three generations. And the new Apple TV has got a serious upgrade in terms of its internals. It supports the A12 Bionic chip now. So the processing capability is going to be a lot better. It's going to help with gaming and it's going to help with HDR and what have you. And uh, the cool thing is they even upgraded the AirDrop support to support Dolby Vision, given that the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max uh, already records in Dolby Vision. So you can seamlessly transfer uh, over AirDrop drop and uh, airplay sorry and you can have uh, that supported on a TV that already supports this. And uh, one of the cool things that they did is they introduced color balancing through an iPhone, which is kind of cool. Now, a lot of people, here we go. This is, how, this is the way to do it. With the UI of the Apple TV, you can adjust the color balance of your TV. You just bring up your iPhone next to it and you start measuring the colors and automatically it'll adjust the color balance for you. Now, if you're somebody that never did color balancing before, it's quite a difficult process that takes a long time Apple makes it seem so easy, which is Apple's way of doing things. They always make things seem so easy and they take the complications out of it. But I thought that this is such a cool feature to enhance the TV that you already have without buying a, probably a new TV. Just color balancing will make a huge difference on your TV set. And now you can do it with your iPhone uh, and, and your new Apple TV, which also gets a remote, by the way, a refresh for a remote, which is kind of cool. Um, I was never a fan of the trackpad on the remote. Now we get a click wheel, which is reminiscent, obviously, of the original iPod. And uh, it looks nice. 
it looks it looks okay. But um, yeah, that's that's the new Apple TV. It's gonna come in the same price. That that new color balance feature, I think, is is gonna be really really great. Now, the next item on the list is the item that got me excited the most is the new iMac running on the M1 chip. Yes, the new iMac is gonna be running on Apple's custom silicon, the M1 chip. And not only that, it's gonna come in seven different colors reminiscent of the original iMac, which by the way, I uh, I was a proud owner once of, and I obviously don't have it anymore, never knew that the iMac was gonna be this big. But um, yeah, brand new iMacs. Now I'm excited for this device. I'm actually um, considering going for blue or yellow. I'm not sure. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section which the, which one I should probably go for. But um, those new iMacs are phenomenal. They come in a very thin, this is the side profile. They're only 11 millimeters thick. They come with an M1 chip, which means that the internals are gonna be reduced in small size. They come in vibrant colors, as you can see, and Pascal colors in the front. They come with white bezels, which I don't mind, but really thin ones, because this is gonna be as big as the 21 inch uh, iMac, but with a 24 inch display, that's gonna be four and a half K, that gives you over 11 million pixels. It's gonna be phenomenal, it's gonna be great. It comes with four type C's on the back, two of them are gonna be Thunderbolt speeds. It comes with MagSafe charger with the with the brick having the ethernet cable in it, which is, you know, managing cables in a much better way. It's it's amazing, I love the design, I love what it can do, and I'm really, really excited for it. It comes with a speaker system, a three on each side that is supposed to give you spatial audio. It comes with a brand new 1080p camera for those meetings and, and, and your Zoom meetings and all that stuff. Here we go, reminiscent of that original iMac with the new colors. Um, and uh, here we go, this is where they show you that the older version, because it was Intel, it came with a much bigger board and had everything separated and it was consuming a lot of energy, but because the new M1 is a system on chip, so it runs differently. You're gonna have all those main components be on one chip, so you make the board significantly smaller and you can use the rest of the area for thermals, so you can make sure that it runs uh, really, really quietly, um, which is something that Apple obviously obsesses over. I really like the new IMAX. I like the design, I like the colors, I like what they do. For what I do in terms of editing and stuff like that, I really think moving to this machine is gonna help me um, a lot. Obviously because it's an M1 chip, so you can get the IS from the iPhones. That's why you're gonna get great quality on the 1080p camera, also for the sounds. And of course, because it runs the M1, the architecture is also shared with the iPhone, so you can get iOS apps running on it, the same way you did with the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and the MacBook 13-inch Pro um, that run on the M1 chip. This is where they discuss the speaker system and the spatial audio that the iMac is gonna be giving you. So I'm really excited for this computer. I don't know which one to go for, yellow or blue. Uh, this, this part just blows my mind, because right now, here we go, yeah, let me pause it. Right now, I have a uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch that has Core i9, 64 gigs of RAM, maxed out to, to, to every single spec you can think of. And sometimes when I edit my videos, I drop frames. I drop frames and it runs really, really hot and the fans kick in almost every single time I work on anything. This thing can handle four timelines, four individual timelines 4K or one individual timeline 8K without dropping one frame, mind blown. That's why when you take things into perspective, this machine will help me accomplish so much more with the stuff that I do, um, especially given that I output those videos in 1440 anyways. So I'm really excited for it. I'm really, really excited for it. And of course, Apple won't be Apple. Unless, yeah, here we go. This is where they show you the magnetic cord. Of course, it's gonna be color matched and uh, with the brick that's gonna be coming with it, obviously it's gonna be on the floor somewhere. There's gonna be an ethernet port so you can connect ethernet on it instead of just depending on Wi-Fi, which is kind of cool. This is a good solution for cable management. You don't need it to be stuck on your iMac on the back or on the desk, you don't need to see it at all. Now, Apple won't be Apple if they didn't match the keyboard and the Magic Mouse and the Magic Trackpad, and I'm a Magic Mouse user, so I like those things. I know they're they're awful for a lot of people, but I don't mind them, I like them a lot, especially with the gestures that you can do on the touch trackpad. And you're gonna get new buttons like the Emoji, Do Not Disturb, and the Sleep Wake button, because obviously it runs M1, so it's gonna operate just like an iPad. And uh, with the higher end models, you're gonna get a Touch ID built into the keyboard. They were able to do that because they built in a processor into the keyboard that is um, part of uh, Apple's uh, privacy enclave and you don't need to worry, or secure enclave, sorry, and you don't need to worry about it being um, uh, not accurate in terms of reading or private in terms of operating. So that's also cool. Also, they have it on the big uh, keyboard and the Magic Mouse again with the trackpad. 
you can color match. I don't know if you can mix and match. Obviously, you would be able to in the future, but that's that's really, really cool that you get all those things out of the box that match your computer. So I'm very happy with the iMac. I'm really excited for it. And the last product that they talked about was the M1 powered um, iPad Pro, which is crazy just saying it again, obviously. iPad Pro is already so powerful. My iPad Pro is a 2020 version and it's so powerful, it does so much. Some of those videos I edit on an iPad using LumaFusion and it's fantastic in every way. The battery life is phenomenal, the display is great, but the new iPads are gonna have an M1 chip, which means they're gonna be even more efficient in terms of battery, in terms of processing capabilities. And what's cool is that the 12.9 inch is gonna come with a brand new mini LED display. Now, if you're not familiar with mini LED technology, what, what that means basically is exactly that. They come with tiny little LEDs that are gonna be under the display and thousands of them which will make color contrast even better, ratio better, and because you can switch on and off those LEDs based on whatever you're projecting on the display, so that means you're gonna have deeper blacks, kinda works like OLED, but you're not gonna get the burn-in. So mini LED is very exciting, and it's definitely a step towards the future in terms of mobile displays. I was hoping for a micro LED, which is basically the same thing, just smaller LEDs, which means it'll give you better dynamic range and all that stuff, but mini LED is a huge step forward in terms of display technology for the iPad, given that they've been using using LCDs ever they started, regardless of ProMotion and all that stuff. So mini LED, I'm very excited for. Um, this is gonna be the photographer's dream in terms of editing on the go, because, or even, even editing on your desk, because the USB Type-C on the iPad Pro is gonna support Thunderbolt 4, which means you can copy huge amount of data so fast, and it's gonna be supporting output to 6K on the XDR display. You can literally have this thing set up as your workstation and you can just unplug it and take it with you anywhere. So with, with the dictation of the Apple Pencil as well, this machine is created for creators, to be honest. If you're a photographer, videographer that does editing and all that stuff, this machine is fantastic. The only thing that it's actually missing, and yeah, there you go, it has two terabyte of storage. The only thing that's actually missing is proper support for applications like, like Final Cut Pro. I wish Final Cut Pro ran on the iPad, if it did, I be very difficult for me to convince me to use something other than the iPad. Now, of course, it's gonna have a 5G, which is kind of cool. So it means you get high speed bandwidth, especially with millimeter wave. Now, the cool thing is what they did with the cameras as well. Um, for the new back cameras, they improved the sensors. And of course you have LiDAR and you can do so much with LiDAR in terms of augmented reality and all that stuff. And it works great. I've used LiDAR and I scanned a lot of things. And the cool thing they did with the front camera is they added this thing that's called center stage. Now, what they, the way they do it is give you a really ultra wide 12 megapixel camera over 120 degrees field of view. So what it does is basically this, keeps you centered in the frame. It tilts and pans wherever you go. Now the camera is not moving, it's just because you have such a wide angle lens that there is room for you to pan and move around within the frame and it gives you this effect as if that the camera is moving, which is which I think is really, really cool. Oh, here, this is how they explain the mini LEDs in this slide right here. You can see that they have like 10,000 mini LEDs on the new iPad compared to the last year iPad, it only had 72 LEDs, which is a mind boggling number, which gives you much better clarity, dynamic range, sharpness, color ratio, color accuracy, contrast ratio, and all those things because it's a mini LED display. So I'm really excited for the iPad. I'm really excited for the iMac and uh, it's gonna come in a brand new color, white color, and you still can use the Magic Keyboard, of course, with trackpad and, and, and what have you. So this was Apple's spring-loaded event. It got me excited for what to expect for WWDC, given that the M1 chip is so powerful. How are they gonna utilize that with software, especially with the new announcements of the new Mac OS and, and what have you. So I'm really, really excited for what's to come in terms of iPad OS, Mac OS, and who's to say we don't see the M1 chip in the new iPhones, right? If anybody can do it, it's obviously Apple. So yeah, this has been it, my coverage of what happened yesterday. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Should I go for the blue iMac or the yellow iMac? I'm leaning towards the blue, but who knows? Anyways, this has been it. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, take it easy.